Doth. I thought I'd never see you again. Excuse me, please let me speak before you attack. Knowledge, used wisely, is the most powerful of tools. isn't one to be taken so easily! Hand over me money, Neela! I've no beef with you! I want what I'm owed from that treacherous pointy-eared thief! Not unless you're a thieving woman! I'm not talking to you! Oh dear! Mecklen! So good to see you! I see you weren't hindered by any of my misdirection spells that were cast purely as a practical joke. Spells? Ye slipped a pot on me head and banged it until I was knocked out, you deaf woman! Enough talk! I want the money you stole, or I'll take it out of your soft elven hide! Half elven? Then I have no idea what money you're talking about. Well, I may have taken a few coins for the road, but I hardly think that's worth chasing after me. It was over two hundred pieces of gold! You knocked me out and fled into the night, telling me some fairy tales about fleeing ordinary wizards to get me to lure my guard! What have you told this character? A dragon ate your pups? Say, give me my gold, or this dagger is going into your ribs! Mecklen, this is getting out of hand. I didn't want to take your money, but I was in dire straits. If you didn't look so peaceful in your sleep, I would have woken you up to come with me. I was going to pay him back. Eventually, at some point, in the future, if I could find him. Come now, it was just a little gold. What's money between friends? Chums? Acquaintances? Yes, well, if I had the money, I would pay him. But clearly I don't. Look at my clothes! Ragged, filthy, peasant-esque. I spent that money on essentials, and essentials aren't cheap. The money is gone. Listen, if you're gonna be like that, then just string me up right now. Gods, you really don't know how to play along, do you? Then we're at an impasse. I have no money to give you, Mechlin. And clearly I don't wish to be scalped. I don't care who gives me the money, I just want it back! All 200 gold! Pay up! Or she'll be on her way to that place, wherever it is that blasted elves go when they've been eviscerated. Hmm. It's been a pleasure to see you again, Nira. I'll take my leave of you now. And if I catch you sniffing around me ever again, I'll cut out your wee black heart. I am very, 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 very sorry about what just happened. I didn't want to steal from Mecklen. I just had no other choice. I wish things had turned out differently. I am not a thief! It was a momentary lapse of ethics in a life-or-death situation. I'm on the straight and narrow, I swear it! 
Right. Let us continue onward. Wait! I, I must speak with Z. Something stranger. My poor dear Namara. I hope she fares well. Giving me trouble. Trouble they are! I think you are busting in on me like this. Dark Moon? I don't know what you're talking about. While I abhor unnecessary violence, perhaps I can make an exception in this case. All right, all right. No need to get rough with me. I'm not the one you want. As it turns out, I do have a line on a group of Shah worshippers in the city. You leave me alone, I'll tell you where to find it. There's a cult that calls itself the Dark Moon. They've been in Baldur's Gate for less than a year, but they're always looking for new recruits. They're pretty rough characters, so yeah, when they asked me about your buddy Rasad, I told them what I knew. A while back, I saw him in Nashville, and then I spotted him again here in Baldur's Gate. They have a safe house over in the Seven Sons building. I can show you the way if you meet me there tonight. What do you want? They worship Shah, the mistress of the night. When else do you think they get together? Terrific. I'll meet you there. All right. Here's the place, just like I promised. Since you've been so good about not killing me, I'll brought you a present. The key to this building. In fact, tonight's all about my bringing presents from my best pals. Hey, boys. You were those friends I told you about. Come on out and say hello. You have done well, Sorum. Your admission to the Order is now assured. I suppose I'll have this one to thank. Be sure to give him some special gratitude. I thought I was in when I found your son's old pal, but you screwed it up. Consider this your way of making it up to me. Let us journey to these cloud peaks and face the Dark Moon cult. Alone, I could never defeat them. But together, we have a chance to put an end to their murderous campaign. While I will never forget Gamoz's death, my desire is not for revenge. I wish only to stop the Dark Moon from claiming more victims. What do you say, my friend? Shall we pursue these assassins to their den? Your words give me courage, my friend. I thank you. The worthy, who have already begun their training in the temple above. And then there are you worthless wretches. The feeble, infirm, foolish and disobedient. Mercy, Master! We came only to serve Shah! Silence, worm. 
You could not even cross the Nightingale floor without waking the guard. The Mistress of the Night has weighed your shadow and deemed you unworthy. It isn't fair! The trials were too hard! So says the most craven of the applicants. You lack the courage even to attempt escape like the others. Your cowardice sickens me. They shall not remain free for long. After we have dispensed with you, we will scour the peaks. They will wish the Ice Trolls had found them first. See how the servants of Shah treat their acolytes? They even prey on their own. Look, my brothers. Intruders! Slay them in the name of Shah! You saved our lives, stranger. How can we repay you? You are a true hero. May the light of Salune ever guide your path. Thank you. You've given me a second chance, and I won't waste it worshipping that Whisperer in the darkness. The trials have eliminated the weak and the foolish, the clumsy and the craven. The winnowing leaves only you, the worthiest applicants for Shah's dark favor. Today, you enter her umbra, bearing not just your body and mind, but also your soul to the mistress of the night. As you train in the darkest mysteries, you too will hear the whispers of the goddess. Believe me, her words bring no comfort. Shah does not coddle the infirm or insubordinate. But to the worthy who obeys, she grants strength and power. Far more power than that wielded by our hated foes, the servants of the moon. What? Who dares intrude on our sanctuary? Can it be? He is talking to me. Gamaz! My brother! How is it you still live? Rasad? Why have you come here after leaving me to die in the streets of Akatla? I did not wish to leave you, brother. The city guards arrested me. They told me you were dead. Slain by the Shadow Thieves. I see that you have learned to lie, Rasad. Perhaps you too are ready to hear the whispers of Shar. I will share them with you. Just as Alargoth shared them with me. Alargoth found me on that street where you left me, Rasad. Rather than leave me to die, he took me into his shadow. But not to coddle me. Instead, he showed me the cold hard truth of our existence. He showed me how I had grown weak under the tutelage of the Sun Soul monks. He showed me how my own brother had made me weaker still. Only power stands between us and destruction. Had I been strong enough to destroy my foes, I would have needed no help. Now the Shadow Weave grants me the strength my body lacked. In the Umbra of Shar, I stand alone with no need of help from others. You have been misled, Gamaz. There is no truth in Shah, only lies. What this Alogoth calls power is only a trap to turn you away from the light. Do not turn away from me, Gamaz. You cannot kill me. I am your brother. That is true. I cannot kill my brother. Applicants, kill my brother. Gamos, listen to me. Shah has seduced you with lies. The power she offers is only the power of destruction. You know this to be true. It was the Sun Soul monks who lied to us. But Alargoth opened my eyes to the truth that lies in darkness. Now that I have opened myself to the Shadow Weave, my powers have grown far beyond those we learned in Kalimport. How have you forgotten all of our lessons? Dark sorcery can only destroy, not preserve. The promises of Shar are as empty as the void of her heart. All promises are empty, Rasad, and Shar offers none. She only demands our obedience. In return, she grants us the power to exert her will throughout the land. You do not need such power, Gamaz. In the Order of the Sun Soul, you were always the strongest among us. You lie again! 
Do you really believe I never noticed how you held back when sparring against me? Say it now, before your new friends. Deny that you pretended to lose to me in every contest. I... I... I cannot lie to you, Gamas. During our training, sometimes I did withhold my full strength. Winning always seemed more important to you than it felt to me. Somehow, I always knew. Only now would I have freed myself from the bonds of light. Can you finally speak the truth to me? But now, it is too late. Unless, strike down your new companions and bow before me. Prove yourself worthy, and I shall admit you into the shadow. I have no desire for power that serves only its wielder. I reject the lies of Shah Gamaz. I beg you to do the same. I embrace the night and all the power Shah offers. Destroy them, minions. Beloved brother, when we were boys, you only pretended to look up to me. Since that day, the Sun Monk caught me stealing. You have only looked down on me. No. I knew you did it as much for me as for yourself. I understood that you... You understood nothing. I was the elder. After father's death, it fell to me to be the strong one. But even in that, you mocked me, holding back whenever we competed at the temple. But that was before Allergoth introduced me to the Shadow Weave. The path to darkness is almost the same as the one taught to us as children. No, I do not believe it. You have been deceived, my brother. Turn away from the Umbra's false promises before it is too late. The shadow of Shah is far more potent than the light of her pale sister. Now I call upon the power of sorcery, as well as the skills we learned together. Even with these new friends at your side, you cannot hope to defeat me. Minions, slay my br- No, Gamas. No more hiding behind your minions. If you wish me dead, you must face me yourself. I have no brother. You are alone, Rasad. Alone for these last living moments. Minions, deal with these others while I destroy this sun soul fool. Gamas. I am sorry. As the silver moon axis and wanes, so too does his life. I take some solace in the fact that I die. I cure him. Thank you. All this time I thought my brother was dead. But misfortune brought us together again, only to prove he was lost to me. Light and dark rain, but one day each moon. The rest is perpetual struggle. Not all the teachings of Selune offer comfort, yet there is wisdom.
I don't want any trouble. Greetings, taxpayers. I am Duke Eltern, commander of the Flaming Fist. Your journey has come full circle. Duke Elton has asked that you travel back to Candlekeep, where you must spy upon the leaders of the Iron Throne. While it troubles you that such evil men now make use of the Great Library, and you wish the circumstances of your visit would be different, it will still be a pleasure to return to your former home. Hold, travelers! Before you will be allowed entrance, you must donate a tome of great value to our library. Salutations. I am Catterly, a visitor of Candlekeep, like yourselves.
Someone disturbs me. Greetings, young one. Awake, my adopted child. Awake, and face the terrible tests ahead of thee. Greetings, young one. Everything will be explained to you in time. Life continues to be quite the challenge. You have been accused of murdering the Iron Throne leaders, and the Flaming Fist will undoubtedly hound your every step because of it. Despite all of this, 
you must return to the city of Baldur's Gate, the very lair of your accusers. You must find and expose the one who is responsible for your predicament. You must find Saravak. You close your eyes tonight, and visions of Candlekeep swim into view. As you pass through the gates of the Citadel, there is a flash of memory, and you are a child of only a few seasons once more. At your side is Gorion, gray-haired even all those years ago. How old must he have been to age so little in the time since? Aged as he ever was, you still have to run to keep up with him. He has an important meeting with Ulrant, the Keeper of the Tomes. An important meeting about you. Funny, you don't remember it. As you stand outside the doors of the Inner Keep, you can hear the shouting from within. Gorion seldom raised his voice, though you did not care to listen to the discussions at your previous stops either. As you trace patterns in the water of a fountain, a reflection distracts you from the argument. A large raven has perched atop a stone wall and stares directly at you with huge black eyes. You stare back through the mirror of the water and are suddenly afraid to meet the bird's gaze any other way. It has claws for feet. You think to yourself, little skeletal claws. The doors of the keep suddenly swing open and Ulrunt storms out. He glances at you for a moment but looks away as he speaks. You both can stay, he sneers, but mark my words, that child will be the death of you. A flash of memory once more, and Gorion walks out of the keep as he is today, dead. You drop your gaze back to the water so as not to see. The raven is gone, but your own image remains. Your eyes are black, like those of a bird. Like father, like child, the reflection says. You wake with a yell, predictably unrested.